Welcome, welcome, welcome. So good to see so many of you on the call. Everyone give a wave. Hello, hello. Lots of avatars, lots of faces as well. You have the option to remain anonymous if you wish, but clearly so many of us are just wanting to shine our light now. And <laughs> I think we've, got, we've moved past that place of fear, haven't we? So I am feeling so much power flowing through. I had the most incredible shamanic deep healing dream, like a medicine journey last night, super powerful, where I was, just to quickly share this because I feel it's important, where I was at some kind of massive event where every single character from my past who has ever had power over me or told me off or abused me or belittled me was there, but I was there in my current now self, in my all powerful self. And they were like, whoa, <laughs> you know, who is this? And it was just like super healing. It was just so incredible. Uh, I just feel that so much energy is flowing now. Um, yeah. I've also just done a quick drive across the peaks to Sheffield and back with my son to take him home. So I've kind of been ultra active and probably need to come into uh, probably in a, in a bit of an adrenaline at the moment. So hopefully we can just calm that down. So without further ado, I'm going to open the call. I always open with an invocation. I'm going to do the great invocation again. And then I'm going to come to each of you for two to three minutes to so you can share and I come to people at random I tend to pe pick people who I haven't come to before please be ready to speak if anyone is listening to the recording of this I edit it to tidy it up but I do not alter the content I do not try to bring interesting people into the front five minutes it just flows as it's meant to flow so if you're watching this recording and expecting and it's like entertain me entertain me entertain me please instead see this it's like we're mining we're mining for jewels we're mining for gems and you don't always find your gem that you're looking for in the first five minutes be tenacious Hold the space for the whole of the call. This is like a, sh a shamanic sharing circle. And the people who come onto the call, who I just pick at random, I don't know who's on here. I don't know what anyone wants to discuss. I don't know what's going to be said. It is what it is. So please hold the space. And I know that so many people are, are gaining a lot of hope, faith, strength, light, from listening into the recordings of these calls, which is why I do record them and I do put them on YouTube and Odyssey channels. Let's just drop into the space now. We've got 76 people on, so just flick through the screens. I don't know if you're on gallery view to see everyone, but it's so wonderful to see so many of you, although um, size is not important, but it does feel there is a momentum gathering around this and and also what I'm doing on Telegram and all over the place, like this giant uprising, which cannot be stopped now, like a swelling of a tsunami wave of energy. Okay. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center, which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out, and may it seal the door to where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. And as I always say, the reference to Christ in that invocation is not necessarily anything to do with religion. 
it is to do with Christ consciousness, Krishna consciousness, whatever your faith. Uh, it is about the return of the light and coming back to that heart uh, space of love and that, that energy returning to earth. Okay, so um, who should we come to first? I'm going to pick someone who I haven't come to before. Let's come to Hedgewitch. Hello. Hi. Hello. Welcome. Hi. Um, I am very excited and I'm so glad that you came to me because I have listened to the recordings and I've never, I've never come on before um, because I haven't really had anything to say, but I really have something to say. And I think you probably on some level knew it. Um, so I'm part of a Telegram group and we had a discussion about are there any people that actually want to do anything that kind of want to explore how we live, how we thrive? Um, and we had a meeting on Saturday and it was a brilliant meeting with just a handful of us. Um, and we came up with an idea that I think can be rolled out um, quite easily, very cheaply around the UK, around the world, hopefully. Um, so just to kind of take you just for one minute on that journey, um, that we were talking about kind of the fact that actually we are going to win, but is it that we split and win or is it that we win? Uh, but either way, we kind of have to reimagine everything. And so we talked about kind of maybe having an organic farm locally and having a school attached. We talked about having an eco village and we talked about freedom cells and the greater reset. And, but then it come, came out of a discussion um, with about Richie Allen's show and a, and a thing that he had with kind of where he was talking about the Orthodox Jewish community and the fact that they didn't really know that there was a pandemic going on because they didn't listen to mainstream media, they didn't have TVs and they kind of only really associated amongst themselves. And it got us thinking that actually if we had locally for our, for our city, if we had kind of a website database of individuals and businesses that were awake, and then, 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 so then the money flows around us and the connections flow around us and we meet people and we build community and we know people. And hopefully then we draw people in as they wake up, as they need us, then they start to have an amazing place where they can, where they can share. Yeah. Um, and we were talking about barter and we were talking about um, things that actually, there are some things that we're, expert in there are some things that we're professional in but actually there are some things that we just really love and that we can offer and that we can kind of if someone wants to learn something then we have skills and yeah and that was and uh, and so we're trying to come up with a name we're trying to come up with a website but that the hope is that actually if if every geographical area had something like that you would know if you needed cucumbers if you needed honey if you needed a haircut if you needed you know, if you needed some acupuncture, if you needed counselling, if you wanted some tutoring, if you want, you know, that you could be part of a community and you could be meeting people. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Hedgewitch. Absolutely. That is so, so on the money for, uh, and that's actually the wrong phrase, isn't it? On the money. That is so aligned to what I was feeling so strongly and this is the interesting thing about Telegram. I encourage everyone, if you're not on Telegram, to go on Telegram to join local groups. Just search for your local town or county and you'll find local groups. Join and then maybe start your own one, which is even more local. Because all of these communities, they will start with groups communicating and then it will it will naturally move into the real world 3d realm who needs what where's my support i need help and so gathering your local tribe joining one or creating one is so important and i i have a sense that all of those all of those little communities that are popping up are all going to start linking together and you're absolutely right hedgewitch and it's a very natural process because this is a this is um a, a return a return to our natural instincts and our natural roots as human beings. And actually, we don't need to overthink it and come up with website names. It's happening already, you know, that's my sense. Okay, so I'm looking for people who I haven't come to before. Let's come to Julie Ligo. 
Hi, um, this is my first ever Zoom meeting, so just bear with me. I've just uh, only just come on about 30 seconds ago, so uh, <laughs> it's all uh, quite new. Um, anyway, yes, um, I wanted to just say that I was listening to um, Dolores Carhill over the weekend and what she was saying about the fact that we live in sort of dual realities at the moment, whereby um, the, the, the others out there in the world are thinking very differently from us. But we've actually got to sort of just focus on developing our own realities and getting together in groups so that those two realities run in parallel so that we're not sort of um, comparing ourselves and wanting the others to come on board, but we're actually marching, well, not marching forward, that's probably the wrong analogy, but moving forward in our own reality. And then and then the two, that vacuum in the middle will minimize. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah. I'm really sensing that. It's like just giving all energy to, to the new thing being born and, and the old thing just falls away like a discarded cocoon as the butterfly emerges. I mean, it, that really is such a great analogy. Yeah, and it, it just felt it just felt so because I think we can be bogged down so much with the people, the family around us, the friends who are around us who are still stuck in another reality, and 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 I think at times that um, it, it's it's so draining that it's so important to be able to to see that we're actually building our new reality. Thank you for that, Julie. Thanks for coming on and uh, for no longer being a Zoom virgin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Wonderful progress. Okay, Julie, thanks. Thank you for that. Let us come to Graham, who's wearing a mask. <laughs> Is that to get my attention, Graham? No, no, it's not. Can you hear me? I can hear you just about oh, okay, through great. the muffled mu muzzle. Do you want to <laughs> take it off? or? Um, I'm, I'll leave it on, actually. Uh, is, is, am I still clear? Uh, yes, but not as clear as you would be if you didn't have. Why? Why are you wearing that out of interest? Oh uh, no, just just oh no 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 reason really. Is that clearer? Much clearer, and it's so nice to see your oh, facial okay. expressions and your your <laughs> your beautiful smile and your whole full face, so that we can sense <laughs> the whole of you and not just your eyes. First of all, just just on the two comments that have been made already, um, I, I, for me, this whole thing, it's a fabrication. Uh, but right at the bottom of it is a, is what we know as consciousness. And for whatever reason, which I don't fully understand myself at the moment, there's a, there's a, there's forces at work which are preventing mankind from actually moving to another level of consciousness. Graham, are you freezing? Stupidly enough, what they tried to do is lock everyone down, thinking that's the way. Unfortunately, it's back on them because what it's doing is intensifying everything. So that's really interesting, Graham, that actually the big tech is, uh, is muffling and distorting you so we can't hear your communication. So there's definitely some, some kind of blockage there. I'm going to come to someone else because your because your audio is not your your connection is not clear. It's difficult to make you out, but we get the gist of that. But the one thing I would say in, in terms of the spelling you just cast, that they're attempting to hold this back, but this right this awakening in consciousness it can't be stopped now. That's my sense. There's too many people waking up. We are like popcorn, and we've got to that critical mass where it's just the heat is so intense. It's just that everyone's popping. And um, there will be a few just sort of uh, blackened husks that never managed to pop left at the bottom of the pan. But, you know, most most will pop at some point. OK, let's keep coming around. Let's come to Tim Sanders now. Hi, everyone. Yeah, thank you for bringing all of us together. I, I truly believe that we are all kind of like cell towers that are beaming out all of this energy. And all of that energy is going to cause all the popcorn to to basically wake up and we're the holders of that that love i prefer using the word love rather than light because from past experience i know that darkness can hide in the light so but darkness can't hide in the love so i believe we're all here to to harness that love and basically bring it through at this time at this hugely challenging time you talked about popcorn just there 
I'm having that trouble at the moment. I live at my parents' house at the moment. Um, I'm an entrepreneur. I just was getting a business going and then lockdown came in. And of course, you know, they've taken the vaccine despite me trying to dissuade them. And maybe I didn't do a great job. But ultimately, you know, I'm torn between, I'm sure a lot of people in this situation where they may be the only person in their family that that is really alive and awake to all of this. Um, and for the others, it's not their time. And for you to force it upon them and, and try and, you know, drag them into this other consciousness actually causes quite a lot of angst. And, you know, and, and but at the same time, you can see what is lying in wait for those people should they make that choice. And it's so difficult um, to maintain your center point just try and stay in that love and that and, and and try and sort of be as loving as you can for those people who make those decisions because <clears throat> we're already seeing a lot of souls leave the planet and they've yeah. decided to do that and it's been their decision to basically be the way showers in the way that they know um, because from those statistics however gruesome they are more people wake up and then the shift comes through in more yeah. force so i just that's all i have to say really other than you know uh i think it's wonderful that that you've brought us all here together to share um from our hearts um so that we can make a difference yeah thank you tim thanks for coming on yes one of the saddest sights i saw in the last week i was driving out of bakewell and there was this huge traffic jam and i realized they were all waiting to turn right into the hospital and i realized it must be a giant vaccination center because it was like range rovers with old people in the back so like the family driving them to their experimental genetic engineering injections and it was so tragic that I just felt like going and putting on a sandwich board and standing at the entrance saying abandon hope all ye who enter here or something like that but thought I'm going to bound to get arrested but it was just so tragic because well we could get into a whole conversation about this but back in the 1930s 1940s in, in World War II you know, people were herded into concentration camps and it, against their will. Here, people are willingly going and driving their nearest and dearest in the belief that they are saving them. I, I just fear so much for what is what is ahead for those genetic engineering injections, the full implications of them that no one truly knows what the full implication is. The fact that anyone speaking out is being censored by Facebook, Google, who are part of the, the strategic partners of the World Economic Forum, along with AstraZeneca and Pfizer and Bill and Melinda Gates. I mean, the whole thing is is shocking what's going on. <clears throat> when the truth is revealed, I think the the backlash is going to be so huge. There is such a critical mass of us who will not go along with it, who will never, never yield to the experimental genetic in engineering injections. We will be, we will be there watching. We will be the thorn in the side, the grit in the shoe, the mosquito in the hotel room, the Jiminy cricket that watches every time Pinocchio's nose gets longer and gives a little whistle, you know, there's too many of us now speaking out for them to keep the lid on this. Anyway, I'm gonna, <laughs> I could easily get on my soapbox. I'm in that kind of mode. Let's come to Morven Bryce in that beautiful orange, red. Hi, Rachel, thank you very much. I just want to start by saying how grateful I am, Rachel, that you have brought people together. And I absolutely loved hearing people share. Um, I'm sure I'm in the same heart space as all of you and I would just want to briefly describe myself as I've been awake since I was a child. I knew this time was coming and when I heard about the killer plague being advertised I knew it was like, you know, my inner voice said, right, it's a womb space, it's a birth canal, it's a midwifing time, go. Uh, so I've been really, really excited. I must say, I was not expecting the awakening to take quite as long as it's taking and to have so many difficult twists and turns but I have I feel I have a very um how would I say it's stable inner communion with the divine you know knowing that 
you know, we're all here for a purpose, even though we've got labels on us, like I'm a musician and a mother. We've got business people, we've got everything, scientists, doctors. So I've been really, really excited about it. I have been actually forming or attempting to form community for many years and not really sussed why it wasn't working, except for to be aware that most humans, um, are, we could say it's asleep, but that sounds so derogatory, doesn't it? That for whatever reason, we're in a sort of, we've been held in a kind of shopping and slavery energetic space, haven't we? Yeah. Where everything's tokenism, you know, it's a hierarchy of slaves, but yet that's not the truth of who we are and we've come to end the game. Um, I just wanted to share something, you know, for my personal life because I've got children in mainstream schooling. I have been reaching out to the schools, but they are not hearing me yet. I also used to be a violin professor at Sheffield University and I was basically you know, sacked because I spoke the knowing, as I call it, but I was offering to, you know, work with people in community and keep my violin students with a physical connection in my home playing because I could see that everything is sort of filtering towards being online, you know, and I'm sure anyone that's a parent here knows that all our kids are being online. I mean, my children are currently going into school because my ex-husband is a key worker and their privileged place is to sit in a classroom online you know socially distanced and I have had um, I did email my children's head teachers and I did come out from the word go I said look I can't pretend to not be awake and aware I want to work with humans I know what's going on I'm willing to open my home as a place where we can do music, sounding, emotional expressing. This is going to be quite tough. You know, we, we're the human family in divine form and we're here together. But so far, they've not really gone for it, you know. And so yeah. I've sort of, like Tim was saying, I've just, I don't seek to share research. I just seek to radiate in the sort of moment. And it's some of it is painful, isn't it? I mean, I feel I'm doing a lot of energetic purging yes you know privately yes you know so that's that's all i wanted to share because uh, i feel like this is a time where we're all coming out of the closet aren't we we're all yeah. coming out of the closet saying actually we've always kind of we've sussed that it wasn't okay here on planet earth and and we're coming out for each other so i'm yes. super grateful to be here um it really touches my heart i'm so grateful a cellist friend of mine told me that you guys met because in the musician community there's a lot of asleepness there's a lot of complying with masks pretending to be playing at carnegie hall with their masks on these are all my musician family that i work with and it's felt really tough to watch them all doing it you know yeah. i can't go into abbey road to record because i'd said no and i spoke my knowing I couldn't do a concert at the festival hall because it was supposedly about Black Lives Matter and we were going to have to have a PCR test and masks. So I just, I wanted to throw that all out there to say like, you know, we really are sort of navigating in the now, aren't we? And doing our yeah. best to actually not comply with untruth. That's yeah. how I feel it. So thanks for letting me share. I'm really grateful to be with you all. And I'm really, really glad to meet you. And I'm in the Peak District, by the way. So, you know, we could, we'll see what happens. You know, I think the lady was at Hedgewich. I mean, just very briefly in 2016, I had a kind of vision about this time and it was exactly what Hedgewich was talking about. I was shown if we were gonna be micro tribes. We were gonna be micro tribes of healers together doing yes. what I think we all know this in our heart. I mean, I'm not telling anyone anything that we don't already know. Yeah. Am I? Thank you, Morvan. Thank you. Thank so you. good, so good to see you. And yes, maybe we will meet in Bakewell, and you can bring your violin, and I'll bring my megaphone, and we can Absolutely. do a jamming session for the public. <laughs> yeah, we all need to be in our big um, divine family micro tribes out there, don't we? Sounding and moving and expressing. Yeah, and it, and it's well, and it's happening in all sorts of ways. Yes, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. Oh, sorry, I, I just cut you off there, Morvan. But the, yeah, thank you so much for coming on. That's wonderful. And yes, absolutely. Out of this will, I feel, come a whole reinvention. There will be 
a natural healing service to replace the National Health Service. And there will be a new way of educating where we teach our children the really important things like relationships and trauma healing and how to meditate and, and how to drum and, and share in circle and conflict management and nonviolent communication and all that amazing stuff, as well as enterprise skills and how to grow your own vegetables and connect with the planet. I mean, it's this is a great reinvention of how how we function as humanity. Okay, let's keep going. And yes, oh, by the way, just to say, put any communications in the chat box because I do send the chat log out afterwards with the recording to everyone who's registered. So if you want to communicate things like links and contacts, then please put the in the chat log. Be, beware, anything you put in the chat log will go out to everyone. I don't tend to curate it because it last the last one was 14 pages long. Okay, so let's see who who's next. By this point, not people are normally waving. Helen, authentic discovery. Hello, Rachel. Hello, everyone. Blessings, greetings. Let us all rejoice. Um, hi, uh, delighted to be here. Um, this time is absolutely phenomenal, isn't it? It's just like, oh, my, good yarn. So, um, yeah, uh, I'm doing, uh, I suppose I'm just going to tell you what I'm actually doing because um, I've kind of, I, I believe that for all of my life that the work did, it's all not right. Uh, I think that you know, from being born and told, yes, you might be British, but English you won't be. So, you know, it's coming from a racial thing, then then just lots of things. And Mr. Bob Marley has been a constant with me and uh, his lyrics are both spiritual. And uh, I'm very aware that this is um, about fight. You know, this is being, um, I don't like to use the word fought, but this is being lived on many different levels, as in spiritual, physical, psychological, their psychological warfare upon us. Um, so I've been quite active. I'm currently uh, involved in a number of different endeavours to try. And uh, number one, we're, we're looking at um, creating the alternative, uh, which has been spoken about, um, so that we do have an alternative healthcare system, education, entertainment, security, banks, the whole shebang. I'm involved with uh, Dolores Cahill, as it happens, uh, supporting her to try and uh, do what she does. Um, I'm also trying to compile a list, a database of alter of businesses and sole traders that are happy to work. Um, the great the great reopening really kind of fizzled and fell on its face. So rather than the song and dance about I'm opening, that people literally, if they've got businesses, that they just come and um, uh, they say yes I, I offer this service because I'd rather I've got right now my for example my vehicle needs attention I'd like to go to a garage that's not going to say put on a mask uh, it's not going to ask me to stand 20 foot away from each other so I'm compiling a database of businesses and sole traders that are happy to trade and then connect them with like-minded people who are happy to go and support that without make it without telling anyone um, I'm also trying to get um uh, youth workers, community workers together, because I really see that we have a generation between the ages of 12 and 25 who are literally having their futures taken away from them. And at that point, as we all know, if I, I can vaguely remember what it felt like to be that young and have that much energy and, and a lack of direction and my hormones are going nuts. And if we're not careful, the same way that the National Front and some nefarious organizations utilize the energy of the skinhead movement if we're not careful our young are going to be radicalized in ways that we really don't want so yeah. trying to get people to go out and do outreach work on the streets um illegally I'm, i don't my biggest thing is uh, they are ignoring that the, those that are orchestrating this are ignoring us and they are ignoring the science they are ignoring everything so therefore i'm done looking to them to change i'm ignoring them and i want to be the change and live the change that um that uh, that i want to see so i'm involved in that i'm involved like so it's creating the alternative the uh creating the database uh connecting with youth workers and community workers um i also go out onto the streets and give free hugs 
So, yeah, as far as I'm concerned, we just have to live the change that we want to see, um, raise our vibration. Um, I've got a potty mouth so they can all go themselves. And, uh, yeah, that's me, Rachel. And I've been trying to get hold of you to kind of uh, connect with you outside of this. So um, whether you will or you won't is yet to be seen. But um, I really want to just let us create the alternative, let us create... Yeah our unfortunate and I think it's unfortunate that we are looking at this dual society um, and I've been involved like this freedom cells getting involved so I think that it is going to be and I don't I'm not calling them all freedom cells but it's just easier like there will be lots of pockets of different communities and then just like what's happening we all need to come together and create our trade agreements and our exchange agreements and our security agreements and all the rest of it so yeah. literally creating the alternative so that we can get on with the absolutely wonderful adventure that is life like it doesn't throw enough shit at us already that's great to hear from you and there is another great reopening happening this weekend valentine's weekend and so if you search on the telegram channel everyone the great reopening and then within that there's every county has got its own group which you can join and uh, and share who's opening and who's doing what so that's that's a good thing just to check into next i'm going to come to the wise fool who i think was on last week and i was thinking to come to hello i can't get my video to work this week or ever maybe my laptop's dying finally and that's just going to be all i kind of need but this is so helpful and you know being on my own living on my own um i have a couple of friends locally that we do meet on the beach i'm down on portland off weymouth my son in Cornwall, my daughter in London, not really on this page, which is worrying. I've just said I'm seeing them get flatter and flatter. And I think for me, what I'm really feeling is having been studying this and looking at this from day one with a real gut feeling, it wasn't what they said. And having worked with the body all my life um, and been fascinated by science, we've done so much this graph against that graph and proving the point and... You know, I think it really is now looking forward into this great reset, this great, you know, the whole purpose of this event or the using of this event for this purpose. How can we begin? And my job, my, my thing at the moment is how can I gently suggest that, every, every, you know, that people who are masked and, and going with all the rules step aside and just look at the why and not it. Yes. Because everyone is just staring at numbers, convinced they're right, just just so easily kind of led now because they're just automata, you know, and almost some of, I don't want to say us and them, that's not, we're all one, but some of us are kind of automatons when we get to the figures now. It's like, what do your figures say? No, you're wrong, mine are right. And it's like, no, let's look beyond to this awful, awful way they want to have us live on planet Earth as robots, really. That's a hard one. I spend ages watching all the videos and reading all the papers, trying to find a sentence here or filming a little 30 seconds on my phone off a video that I can share on Facebook that isn't too much too soon. Just something so that people go, oh, Oh, well, that's, I, I didn't realise that. Um, oh, OK. And then just maybe a little question mark has popped out the top of their head and then just leave it and, and keep going. Yeah. <laughs> that's kind of where I am with it at the moment. OK, thank you for coming on, Wise Fool. Thank you. I'm, I'm Annie. I'm, I'm, I'm Annie, really, but uh, you oh, can't do that. Thank because you. Um... <laughs> thank you, Annie. And... Uh, I just think that we're going to get to a tipping point and suddenly everything will, will transform and shift. That's my sense. Okay, let's see who else we have. Uh, let's come to Anthony Gratrex. Oh, hi. Um, I find the prospect of uh, speaking to a live audience uh, a lot more scary than the coronavirus, I must confess. Um, <laughs> First, I'd like to say how much I admire your spirit, uh, um, Rachel. It's absolutely magnificent. I noticed a posting on your Facebook some time ago that you were reading the, syn uh, the Synagogue of Satan. 
No, someone sent me that video and I held the space to watch it, but I'm not, ad I'm not endorsing it or advocating it. No, 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 it's not that. Um, well, there is a book called that and it's written by Andrew Carrington Hitchcock. I think the mistake that most people here don't appreciate, and that is just how powerful a global mafia we're really up against. Until you understand that, you don't really understand the immensity of the problem. I think it's been dawning on us, <laughs> slowly, well, surely. <laughs> well, to get some background, it's worth reading a few books like uh, the one I've just mentioned. Um, also, a book like Confessions of an Economic Hitman by John Perkins. Also, A History of Central Banking by Stephen Mitzer. Mitford Goodson. It's only when you read these books that you really understand what we're really up against. Yes. This, this is all really what we're into now or up against. Well, we're I starting mean, to see it, aren't we? We're, it's starting to show its face much more coming out of the shadows and, and reveal, it's being revealed, isn't it? Well, to some of us, we've known what the agenda is even before the coronavirus. Uh, uh, this present situation occurred. Another big difficulty we have is that we have to confront so many people that have complete cognitive dissonance. And that is a real problem because or a lot of people um, afflicted uh, with this. I fear the agenda far more than I do the virus. So Anthony, I'm going to mute you back there because we I'm giving people two to three minutes. Is that I uh, hopefully that's okay? Yes, that's fine. In actual fact, if I never have to speak again, I'm quite happy with that. Thank you, Anthony. So yeah, please do post the link in the chat, and then we can have a look and uh, and and delve into that. I have to say that sometimes those that kind of content is just too traumatic for me to look into. But I think the just to take that to a to a the deeper level, because you mentioned it, if you listen to this back again, what you're really truly dealing with here is deep fear. This is about deep fear. You open your share with that. You're frightened of talking. The fear of this overwhelming external force, and this is a real primal thing, and it's exactly what my dream was about last night, about all those situations where we've frozen in the face of overwhelming external force and we haven't been able to fight or flight, so we've frozen it. So this trauma healing, as we start to bring that online and we start to unfreeze and our adult self starts to recreate the, the, the situations, the terrifying situations, so that we're able to transmute and alchemize that frozen trauma. It's a very intense process and you, you experience it intensely in ayahuasca as well. So I, you have to face your demons. You can't not face your demons. And you have to clear through, purge, alchemize, and fully feel. You have to confront your demons. The only way through, it, the only way out is through the darkness. You have to go into the darkness to get out to the light. And it's terrifying that we are in this birth canal. We are headed to the light, and it's the most intense and frightening part of the journey. If you imagine being born and the intensity of a baby, not knowing what's happening, and suddenly it's it's transforming from one state to the other through this horrifically intense experience. It's kind of, this is what, uh, I th was it Morvan who was saying earlier about the birth canal? Okay, let's come next to Karen Neal, who's got her hand up. Hello, Rachel. Hello, everybody. Hi. Um, I am so grateful to have found you. Um, I, uh, I live alone. I'm an artist. I'm 60, 67 on the 30, sorry, 23rd of March. Um, I, uh, I haven't been awake since uh, as, as long as Morvan has. And, uh, that was, that was amazing what you, you, you said, Morvan. It was wonderful. Um, um, but, um, yeah, uh, I have a buddy and we probably do, uh, Honestly, between eight to twelve hours of research a day, most days. Um, I through this, I've reconnected with my spiritualism, which uh, I have to say I had neglected. Not that I had become a bad person. Um, that self care had had um, 
you know, have, have been back in the distance, but always connected, always. Um, so that is really lovely uh, since uh, the winter solstice. Um, and and um, quite, you know, um, with the best intentions, I, I was trying, you know, uh, to to globally reunite, or oh, sorry, unite uh, the world within light. And I appreciate what the gentleman said earlier about the um, this confusion with with light and and love. So let's use the word love. Um, and I, I wanted, you know, I, I had a vision um, during meditation of of this this circle of light around the earth. And, and it was all of us linking hands with our light and our love. And it was really powerful. And I've, I've actually been painting that. And I've been painting it to five, two, five, sorry, five to eight uh, frequency music because I'm, I'm learning about sound healing. And it's just wonderful and that law of attraction. And, but but more than anything, Rachel, I I only we only found you um, at the weekend through David Ike, and we've watched most of your videos now, and we absolutely love you. And don't you dare let anyone tell you how oh you must get to the point, and you know you know you 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 know you you're on your walk and blah blah. You know we love it, and and that's the way it should be. But more than anything, it's just so lovely to to find the community. Um, and we need, we need this, and we, and the, the, uh, the, uh, what was her, uh, um, can't remember her name, sorry, the lady from Telegraph, that's just music to my ears, it, it, I feel so emotional anyway this morning because of this, um, um, and I think I, I, I did email you to say that at the weekend, my, my voice is really shaky because it's just lovely to, to be with you all. Yeah. Uh, like minds and on our mission. Um, and um, very sadly, I've been walking my dog and I saw a group of women talking and um it was evident that they were talking about a local care home where 19 elderly, all 19 elderly residents had died within the last few days. Wow. And, and, um, and the lady um, was saying that it was her daughter who was the, sh the chef at this home who had, you know, told her and that, um, and I asked, had, had they had the vaccine? And the lady said, no. And she said that no, it was a it was a, a care worker within the home who had COVID unbeknown and had spread it to all the patients and they'd all died. So that care worker will be carrying carrying the blame. So if you think about it, that's going to be incredibly easy right across the board. You know, what what do you do? What do you do? It's all blurred. They're going to be able to uh cover this up so well how you know even an autopsy how will an autopsy discern from from the covid vaccine and mm, the i don't know i don't know these things but but um so it didn't ring true so uh i rang i i looked up the details of the home when i got home Wymondley care home uh, near Hitchin and I rang them and I asked to speak to the manager Paula Simpson she was she didn't work at weekends and i and i continue speaking to this gentleman on the phone and um and I'm sorry I'm sorry but in the name of God and light and love I told a porky pie and I said that um I was um from one of the national newspapers and we'd heard the devastating tragic news of this home and um we wanted to ask some questions and um could you tell me you know did the patient did the residents have the vaccine and the gentleman said yes and I and I said and he he, he said the Oxford vaccine and uh, I said oh and how long ago was that and he said last last week so they've all died within a week so so they're so they're telling and, and, and I wonder you know how does that work does the care home manager is the care home manager in on it or or, or because of data protection, blah blah, is it just kept within the the NHS or whoever's 
I don't know. You know, Rachel, how these things work. You know, who who knows? Who ultimately knows the truth in these care homes? But anyway, more than anything, it's just lovely. I put this out to everyone I, I feel, you know, can carry it and can 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 use it. Um, in fact, I got a, an email back from anyway. It doesn't matter. But yeah. more than anything, it's just lovely to, to be part of this. Thanks. It's what I've been searching for. Thank you, Karen. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing that and and uh, and letting us know about that story. And yeah, it it is shocking. It is absolutely shocking. And so many people must be questioning or knowing, but frightened to speak out. And it's going to get to a point where that cannot just be kept a lid on. It it just can't. They can't keep a lid on it forever. Okay, I'm conscious of time. There's nine minutes to go. There's, I've got four baked potatoes in the oven and sons to feed. So let's come to Lisa. Hi, Rachel. Hi. Um, just quickly, because I, you know, I really want to bring you all some comfort because I can see some people are struggling that are, are on as well. And just want you all to know that that light that's within you is absolutely untouchable and unbreakable. And I, back in 2019, felt that it was a knowing that the world just somehow, something's going to tip and we can't go on like we're going anyway. And that that wasn't particularly normal, you know. And then this has happened and I've had my meltdown and breakdown with it because I'm one of these people I want to save humanity. And it was weighing on my shoulders and I was awake and it was so frustrating that other people weren't. And so I had such a huge meltdown. But then I was given a vision because I do meditate and it was huge. And I saw past civilizations. I've seen the present and I've seen the future where we're going. And I'm just going to say to you all that there are going to be huge amounts of death. It's, it's like the world is rotten and there's not much light left on it. And there are people now that we're not going to be able to reach our light to them I'm afraid they're going to go and it was their soul contract if you like um and I also meditated a couple of days ago in the hope that I may well just get on here today and I was given a tree in winter and that tree was completely stripped back there out in the cold with no growth at all but it knew to stay rooted in its roots in the ground and through that, just staying rooted, along comes a new season and the buds start to grow and to form, which is what is happening with all of us now. And we are connecting with like-minded people and new shoots and growth is coming. And I don't know what the future holds for any of us. But one thing I do know is that none of us are going to take that vaccine and we're going to stay rooted and firm and strong yes. and in our faith. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yes. And OK, we're probably out of time. but <laughs> No, that's great. Great to hear from you. And thank you for sharing that vision. And absolutely, that is a very strong, powerful analogy. And uh, it is, you know, this this shift of in bulk last week of this this return of the life in the spring is there's, there's definitely been a shift in energy. So thank you for that. Um, I'm going to come to Christmas Star and then maybe Ray Savage just to end. So let's just have a couple of minutes. I'm going to have to find Christmas Star. I'm, I'm choosing Christmas Star because I'm seeing so much on the chat. Where are you? Where are you? How do I find you? Oh, goodness gracious me. <laughs> I'm trying to find... Oh, there's Christmas Star. Can you come on? Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, Rachel. Hi. Hi. Yeah, uh, my name is Roseanne. I, um, I have a, an avatar and a, a fake name because from the beginning we were saying that we were going to do this, but now I see that everybody has their faces up. So maybe from next week I'll... I'll put my real face on. Um, but yeah, so during this whole journey, I've been through a lot of changes. Um, first, you know, trying to fight with the people who aren't awake, as we put it, 
but I don't like that term either. Um, and then being in despair, thinking that nothing's going to change, etc. But um, every day I feel different because things are cha changing so quickly. And today's today's chat I really like because it seems that we're starting to do practical things. Um, we're starting to do practical things to build the new earth because I think we can't, we already know the, the agenda. We already know that that's going on, but we really can't dwell on that anymore. And we really can't, unfortunately, try to change our friends and family. Um, all we can do is set an example. And the way we're going to do that, I think, is with practical measures like forming the communities that people were talking about, um, planting our own food. And once we start building those communities, um, I think I'm going to open my video. There I am. Hey, hi. <laughs> So, so um, I think that once we start um, building the new earth, everybody, I, I think people will just move along and the old earth will, will fall away. Yes. So I think the way forward is doing practical things. And, and I've, I've been on lots of groups in these past months and we've just been lamenting and thinking and giving our point of view. But I think that now we have to take action and do practical things. Yeah. Take practical steps. And so that's why I hope that maybe out of this group, we can form some sort of, I, I'm just dying to do something practical. Yes. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Christmas star. Thanks for coming on. And thank you for showing your face in the place. And um, yes, yeah, so just, just on that, um, we are indeed, I mean, many of you who won't have to be aware of this, and I'm going to come to Ray to end, but just to just give this little announcement, I did a couple of weeks back put out a call for to create a, a um, an eco-community project and just said anyone who's interested, please, um, you know, send me an email with Inner Sanctum in the title. And so far... 43 people have stepped forward with a combined financial commitment of 6.3 million pounds. So we know that we have the potential and quite interestingly, because Robin's putting his thumbs up because Robin was very much the initiator of this and is kind of the project manager mastermind of, of this. And we actually, he expanded my mind because he found this 500 acre estate a bit north of the Peak District which is under offer, but it's £5 million, which has really expanded my mind. Because just imagine what we could do with 500 acres of land, and it had maybe about 12 different uh, houses on it and a, ma um, and a central manor house. I mean, I don't, I don't think we, that is the property, and I don't think we'll get it, but it certainly served to expand my mind as to what we could create. It had woodland, a river running through it, acres of land to do uh, farming and lots of space for accommodation and to have people living there as well as guests coming and retreats and all sorts of and then like a complete eco community and just think how many people on a 500 acre uh, you know freehold land like a whole estate it's quite phenomenal so I'm very excited about that and those of you who are part of that who've signed up we've got a zoom meeting later today so I'm looking forward to those of you who've expressed an interest because we're going to start really making that bring that from the imagination into the 3d reality and make it manifest as soon as we can because so I think that having a base is going to really be a very powerful thing so um so yes yeah, you're interested in that email me with inner sanctum in the email title if you want to get and and it's a mix of people putting in money and then people are saying they want to rent and people saying they would like to sort of contribute through skills so it, it, we're not we're not going to make it into a spiritual davos like you can only be part of it if you have money so if you're interested in that please put your uh, uh, send me an email with inner sanctum in the email title very important so let's just end by coming to ray savage hi ray and which is a couple of mi minutes just to end yeah. here can, can you hear me rachel yes hi first, first of all rachel i have to say a huge thank you to you and the group of people that have joined you i knew i was in the right group before i saw anything and i heard the amazing invocations 
that were playing as we were coming in and how absolutely powerful those were. Thank you so much. I've got an unusual background. I'm an ex-cop. I used to run a counter-terrorist unit and I saw this coming years ago. The biggest terrorists we have are our leaders, the people who are acquiescing to this system that is pervading across the planet. But I would like to give people a lot of hope. It's small. The people that control this are small. All they've got by their mind control is huge numbers of people acquiescing to it. And those people need the leadership that can come from a group like this to actually crash that and fast. Let me just quickly address the vaccines. I've been working with some quantum nuclear physicists. They have a way of getting the RFID chips out of the body and nullifying the impact of the vaccines if they get to people um, fairly quickly. So there's an antidote to that. So we do not to be in fear over that. And someone mentioned fear, and I always think of fear as false evidence appearing real. It's false fear. We just, as Rachel said, we have to go through that dark night of the soul. And boy, do I wish that all our politicians could take ayahuasca because we'd have a different world tomorrow if they jolly well did, if they purged out all their blackness and all their darkness. On the point of, I, I'm the custodian of, not totally, but I'm the custodian of 100 acres of ground on the South Downs. I've been desperately wanting to put out or, or manifest the vision that so many people have been talking about on here. And as part of that, there's a website, www.pleasantquantumrise, that actually sets out the tenet of what we've been trying to do. But I will join that group, uh, Rachel. Um, I'm in the situation at the moment where that unit of land is having to go for sale because I've come out of a relationship with someone that didn't think the same way as I did, didn't want to bring a whole community in and always stood in the way. But maybe that's something we could look at as a buyout because the property is actually on the market at the moment. Um, that there's so many people, so many things with the background that I've had, certainly in counter-terrorism and in policing for many years, I saw the policing go from service in the 60s to force. And if that doesn't tell you something, even the name told us, you know, these people work in plain sight, but we haven't had the vision to see it. But I'm so, so positive that we are the group that is, and there's so many groups across the planet like this, we are the group, I'm losing my voice, uh, the group that actually is going to bring about the change. And we don't need hope, we actually are doing it and action is what's needed. So I'm so happy to be part of, of this group. Wow, thank you. What a lovely finale for, for you to come on and share that, Ray. And yes, actually, a lot of people have responded to the Inner Sanctum call who've yeah. said they don't want to be North, they want to be South. So I would really suggest, let's put it into the group. If anyone wants or put it in the chat box for people to contact you because my sense is that you can you will find the people who can buy your partner out so that you can form that community just imagine if there were lots of these communities all over that where people are just taking control of the free, the land the freehold becoming literally the free men of the land uh, Rachel, something I wanted to offer because we have a campsite on the property and uh, we can get a thousand people camping on the property. I'd like to offer the uh, potential of a freedom festival at Easter. Woo! So uh, where we all got together and where we really sung and jo joyfully did the shamanic dancing and all the invocations, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, to actually land this freedom movement. So that's something I want to offer as well. Yes, like like Burning Man, Savage Man, we'll have to call it, won't we, Ray? <laughs> so, on that thought, so thank you all so much for coming. Let's just all have a little wave so I can just come across the screens, just <laughs> say hello to everyone. Oh, so many wonderful, and then we've got all the avatars. So there's 92 people still on. Thank you all so much for staying to the end. This has really got a wonderful energy. And um, I'm just so grateful to you all for showing up. Lots of love. Bye for now.
I invoke the creed and dream awake the full cellular essential of my being, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual in this now, with the full support of God, Goddess, the Ascended Master Realm to include our Ascended Master Self, Father Saint Germain, Sananda, the Holy Mother Mary, Kwan Yin, Goddesses of Mercy, Archangel Michael and the Legions, Ashtar and the entire command, Babaji, Raphael, Gabriel, Clan of the Trumpet Angels, Aboriginal and Tribal Shaman, Goddesses of Fortune, the Angels of Light, Elohim, Clan of the Serpents, Shiva, all Christ frequencies, all animal totems, elementals of fire, air, water, and earth, all divine beings of light, love, and ascension, named and unnamed, to activate the cells within my being who are your counterparts with the unified power of the one. I decree my highest good always operating in this now. I decree grace and mercy always operating in this now. I invoke, decree, and dream awake the full truth and reality of ascension in this now. I invoke and dream awake with every breath that I breathe the violet fire transmuting my whole being. I invoke and dream awake the full current of ascension in every cell of my being. I am ascended. I invoke and dream awake expanded God consciousness fully realized in me has unlimited abundance fulfilling my every need and desire. I invoke and dream awake the ending of procrastination, tiredness, blockages, obstacles, and unhealthy belief systems. I decree immediate abundance in my life. I invoke and dream awake my liberation from all karmic debt. I am infinite opulence. I invoke and dream awake my personal empowerment in every instant that anyone is impacted by my being and creations. I invoke and dream awake the infinite empowerment of my sexual, spiritual, mental, emotional, physical, and financial relationship with life. I invoke and dream awake sacred sexuality, erotic innocence, and always express the sacredness of sexual force for pleasure, creativity, and healing. I invoke and dream awake world universal healing from all sexual woundedness and shame. I invoke and dream awake worldwide release of all manipulating forces and beings who would control humanity past, present, and future. I invoke the angels and ascended masters to realign and heal all misused energy to include the full restructuring of our DNA. I invoke and dream awake the transmutation of all negative and judgmental projections. I invoke and dream awake my constant ability to be centered and balanced in my psychic perceptions and empathic nature. All overwhelming psychic energies are released by me automatically, easily, effortlessly. I am empowered by everything. I invoke and dream awake my lucid dreaming each night I sleep and total remembering when I awake. I invoke and dream awake my infinite harmony with God, Goddess I am. I invoke and dream awake the full expression of my miraculous healing power. My life is a continuous stream of miracles. I invoke and dream awake my infinite ability and willingness to receive all life's blessings. I invoke and dream awake a constant attitude of gratitude for my whole life. All my accomplishments and blessings including the same for the universe at large. I invoke and dream awake the full blessings of God, Goddess, the Ascended Masters, Angels, Guides, and Beings of Light to bless this earth. I invoke and dream awake all my decrees, invocations, and prayers I have released to the universe and open myself to God's response, support, and love in my highest good. I invoke and dream awake the release of all past, present, and future lifetimes of decrees and vows which would bind me to limitation, lack, density, and anything not of ascension in this now. I invoke and dream awake the full reclaiming of my eternal self as powerful, loving, and fully aligned and abundant God consciousness. I invoke and dream awake the total dissolving of all manipulating forces which would bind this earth laying in fear. I invoke and dream awake the influence of the ascended master realm and angels to intercede and raise the vibrations higher to bring darkness into the light, raising the frequency of love and God consciousness on planet earth in this now. I invoke and dream awake the ascension of planet earth in this now.